Procreate has a free dupe for Android. How am I just finding out about this? The name's High Paint, and last I checked, it also works on phones. But I will be testing it out with my iPad because it's what I've got on hand right now. So this is the home interface, and it can be customized to your preference, such as dark and light mode. Oh, good. God, it burns my eyes. Now the canvas interface is so much like Procreate. Here's the canvas setting. There is even animation in it. And next to it are the filters, which I will try later. And over here are the export options. Pretty standard so far. Let's check the brushes. What is this? Love brush? Oh, it made bunch of hearts. That's adorable. Then there is a colorful brush that is just pink. Why not call it pink brush? And a character brush with high paints mascot. It's pretty cute. I already made a canvas, but before that, you can choose the interface for left or right-handed, which is pretty neat. I don't know if Procreate has that, I don't remember. So the first thing I do is look for brushes that feel like my go-to brushes in Procreate and Ibis Paint. I noticed that high paint brushes are really small, especially the sketching brushes. Like, even the biggest size is still too small for me. I'm adjusting the brush maximum size to be bigger. They're also quite translucent, even the default round brush is a bit transparent. To make it more solid, turn on the accumulative toggle. Now we can draw the silhouette of this painting. This is why I need a big, solid round brush, because it's hard to paint the big picture with small brushes. And thank heavens it has liquify tool. It's located next to the paint bucket on top. You can adjust the intensity by adjusting the brush size and opacity. The liquify is pretty decent, not as smooth as Procreate, but pretty good for a free app. There are also some liquify options. What's reduction? Oh, it's to erase the liquify. That's pretty cool. The other options are similar to Procreate and Ibis Paint, so it should feel familiar. I will continue drawing the silhouette. If you're gripped out by flying heads, I'm really sorry. I've been collecting references of people interacting with statues. Well, most of them are making out with the statues. I don't know, I just think they're aesthetic. Maybe I have a thing for statues. These are the layer functions. It looks pretty solid, it has all the blending modes Procreate and Ibis Paint have, so it's looking pretty good so far, High Paint. Now I will use the 6B brush to roughly sketch our painting. I noticed that you can pick colors by long pressing your screen, just like in Procreate, but since my pinky finger keeps accidentally activating it, I decided to just disable it. You can adjust the long press time as well, so it would take longer for it to pick color, but to manually pick color, use this circle in the bottom left. And I think that's pretty much the big adjustments I made in this app. Feel free to adjust it based on your needs. So far, it is similar to Procreate, save for some interface layouts. I'm drawing another cafe. I swear, I should just be a cafe fan artist. He's so fun to draw. He's so full of expressions and so, so baby girl. I asked on my Instagram who should cafe kiss and the majority voted for Al Hayton. I thought people would vote for themselves, but I guess you guys are not as the Lulu as I thought. I have faith in humanity again. Anyway, Procreate's brushes are very... How should I put it? Magnetic? Stretchy? I don't know how to describe it, but... You get what I mean, right? Even the sketching brushes are like that. I actually prefer high paints sketch brushes because they're quick and loose instead of magnetic. I just don't like having to adjust a lot of things for the brush when I first start. And why the statue I draw looks 10 times scarier than the reference? It looks really mad at cafe for some reason. Unfortunately, I didn't find a brush similar to flat watercolor opaque, my go-to brush in Ibis Paint or Blackburn for Procreate. I usually just use one brush from everything, from sketching to rendering, but I'm gonna have to use multiple brushes in high paint. For clean sketch, I'm using the fountain pen brush. The brush is actually quite nice. It's a line art brush, but you can also draw loose lines with it. If you're using it for actual line art, you'll have to keep a steady hand because I don't think high paint has a stabilizer like Ibis Paint does. Okay, now, why does the statue go from looking scary to straight up homophobic? What's wrong with your statue? Anyway, drawing statues is great for value studies. If you feel like your rendering looks flat, do some value studies on statues. Statues have clear shadows and monochrome look. It helps prevent distractions from colors. If you're a beginner, choose a statue with minimal detail and focus on the shadow shapes and intensity. Let's talk about the lasso tool because it's a bit different from Procreate and Ibis Paint. When you tap on the lasso icon, you get options like magic wand, rectangle, ellipse, etc. You can 
make freehand selections by drawing on the screen, but if you tap your screen, it turns into a polygonal lasso tool. It works great to select angular shapes. To add more to your selection, click on the lasso icon on the bottom, and click Add and select whatever area you want. You can also subtract parts of the selection. Personally, I prefer IB's Paint's lasso tool because it can automatically add selections without clicking on these extra things. But yeah, that's the lasso tool. Now we can move on to the base color. I tried using the paint bucket tool, but the color kept bleeding everywhere. I tried to adjust the tolerance and extended edge, but I can't figure out what they do, so I just ended up coloring it manually. Fung, why didn't you just Google and research what they do? Look, here's the thing. It's just base color. I don't feel like putting in that much effort for just base colors. Alright, I'll be back in a few minutes. See you in the future. Two thousand years later. Hi, welcome back. Did you have a nice nap? I've grouped all the layers to shade them together, but unfortunately you cannot clip a layer onto a group in high paint. In Ibis Paint, however, you can clip directly to the group, but here I had to duplicate and merge the layers in the group first, and now I can clip a layer on top of it without any color bleeding. Procreate is similar, you cannot clip a layer onto a group there either. For hard shadows, I looked for a textured brush in the library but couldn't find the one I liked, so I used a medium and hard airbrush. I play around with the opacity to create mid-tones. I tried the smudge tool but it felt too weak, so I switched to the blur tool. However, the default blur tool is too strong and it softens the image a lot, so I suggest you modify it. I'm just too lazy to do so. It's quite hard to blend the skin color, even with the blur tool. I end up using the watercolor brush which has a soft, watery feel and thankfully it works great for blending. So far, I have used 7 brushes in high paint. Default round brush, 6B pencil, fountain pen, soft, medium, and hard air brushes, and the watercolor brush. That's a lot of brushes. Normally, I just use one. Also, I'm still getting used to high paint, so this painting is coming out rougher than usual. It takes time to get comfortable with a new app. I mean, I used to dislike Ibis Paint because it felt wonky compared to Procreate, but now I use it more than Procreate. However, I have a checklist of essential features a drawing app needs before I even try it. First is of course Liquify. Fung, I bet you can't even draw without Liquify. Yeah. You're right, I have an unhealthy attachment to liquify. What do you mean I have to make a selection and move something manually if it's out of place? Screw that, ain't got time for that. Second is blending modes. Not all of them, as long as the app has multiply, overlay, color, and add, I'm happy. Third is a selection tool, like the lasso tool we discussed earlier. Last one is filter, which usually includes color adjustments and image editing tools. We'll talk about that in a minute. But yeah, these four features are must-haves for me to work efficiently. I use them all the time in Ibis Paint and Procreate. Of course, every artist has different needs, so find the app that suits your workflow. Okay, I actually still need to render Cafe's hand his earring, and also finish the statue. But let's pause and go through high paints filters. First is color balance. It's split into midtones, shadows, and highlights, making it easy to adjust colors separately. I usually use cool colors for shadows and warm colors for highlights. Ibis Paint doesn't have this separation, so high paints color balance is better. Next one is luminosity. It's basically to adjust brightness and contrast, and then hue and saturation, which most drawing apps have. Next is natural saturation. I don't know what this is, so the top one only affects cafe saturation, while the bottom affects the whole image. I don't know either. Next is opacity. It's to adjust the transparency. Next we have Gaussian blur. Pretty sure all of you know what it does. And then motion blur. Oh, oh good lord, it's like I'm tripping. Oh, they have sharpen. I always use sharpen to add crispness to my finished artwork. Next one is noise. It adds a paper-like texture, but it slightly lowers contrast. The last five are photo style filters. Black and white sketch, vintage photograph look, cool and warm. Why is the warm purple? Shouldn't it be orange? Edge contour. Oh, this is like a Photoshop filter. And lastly, bloom. I don't know what it does other than burning my retinas. Let me know if you have any idea what this does. Gradient maps would be nice to have though. It's such a time saver for coloring. So, is high paint better than Procreate? Uh, financially, yes. 
If you're looking for a free drawing app for Android that's eerily similar to Procreate, then yes, High Paint is pretty good. I mean, so far there hasn't been a legal kerfuffle between Procreate and High Paint, so I think it's 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 all good. For a free app, it has a comprehensive feature set. It's easy to learn, even though you might need to adjust the brush settings at first, but overall, it's pretty nice. So give it a try and let me know what you think, and that's about it. Bye!